We greet you in the name of Christ, and today we celebrate the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul. We uh, use the order of responsive prayer one, found on page 282 of your LSB hymnal. Holy God, holy and most gracious Father, have, have mercy, mercy and, and hear us. us. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Lord, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We confess together our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 113, also in the front of your hymnal. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on the high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. We join now in the responses. Show to us your steadfast love, O Lord, and, and grant us your salvation. salvation. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let, and let your, your saints shout, shout for joy. joy. Lord, keep this nation under your care and, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let, let my cry come to you. As Pastor Randy mentioned, uh, today we are celebrating uh, the festival of, of St. Peter and St. Paul. And you actually, at the beginning of the uh, the Lutheran service book, if you have that, uh, the worship book at, at home, it actually has in the, in, the, in the section where it gives the lectionary, the three-year cycle of readings, there's a, sec, there, a page right after that that actually lists the feasts of the church. And um, Lutherans, we don't have as many feasts as some of the other traditions. kind of makes me sad. I like all the feasts and festivals, but because I'm a, just a festive kind of guy, I guess. Um, but Peter and Paul obviously are, there is no church in the sense that we understand it without these two men and their contributions. And so we're going to talk about that in our message. Uh, but today, uh, our, the reading that we have is, is an unusual reading in the sense that as, as important as Peter and Paul are to the founding of the church, at least from the, the, the textual evidence, what we have in Acts and in, in the writings of Peter and Paul, we don't see the two men in the same place very much. So this is one of the few stories that this, this Jerusalem council where we actually see them together and we actually uh, see them both interacting and, and interacting with a bigger group of people. So it's interesting, as important as these two guys are, they really seldomly have evidence of them being together, even though we even believe that they died both in Rome around the same time. Just the, the actual Bible doesn't show them, and certainly the book of Acts, they're kind of doing separate things. So this, this, that's why this is an important text on this festival day. So our New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 15, uh, beginning with the first verse. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders in question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversations of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, <clears throat> they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them in order for them to keep the law and to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, and by the mouths of the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, by giving the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ just as they will. And all the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Paul and Barnabas. As they related signs and wonders, God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles and taken from them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return. I will rebuild the tent that David has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins. I will restore it, that the remnant of the mankind may seek the Lord. And all the Gentiles who are called by name, says the Lord, who make these things known of old. Therefore, my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. From ancient generations, Moses had in every city those who proclaim him, 
and for he read every Sabbath in the synagogues. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders and the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas called Barsabbas and Silas, leading man among the brothers, with the following letter. The brothers, both the apostles and the elders, and the brothers and the, who are the church of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sicilia, greetings. And since we have heard that some of the persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them instructions, and that seemed good to us, having Paul come to one accord and choose men and send them to you and our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you of the things of the words of mouth, for it seems good to the Holy Spirit for us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements, that you abstain from what has been sacrificed from, idol, from idols and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. You keep from yourselves from these. You, do, you will do well. Farewell. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue... Uh, our worship with our hymn of the day, uh, number 518, and uh, this is a, 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 a hymn that celebrates the, the, the saints and the significant people of the church, and so with that in mind, we're going to sing the first verse and the two verses that uh, correspond with uh, Peter and Paul. meditation on your word be pleasing in your sight, God. Amen. So I'm going to start this message. We're kind of taking a, a, a quick look at this hymn that we just sang. 
Um, once again, today, is, today we're going to look at yesterday technically, or, or Monday was technically the, the feast day that we celebrate uh, the, the work of, of Peter and Paul and their contribution to the church. And um, the hymn that we just sang that, that Katie picked out for us, uh, the, the second verse of that hymn talks about them. And it just, in, in a broad way, it, it kind of talks about their contribution. And, and then it's kind of a good introduction to uh, the text that we have, um, this, this story of this, of this council. And, and, and more specifically, we're going to look at what were Peter and Paul's contribution to this, uh, to this council. And, then, and it speaks to their greater contribution to the church. So let's look at these words again. It says, then we, we praise you for St. Peter. We praise you for St. Paul. They taught both Jew and Gentile that Christ is all in all. To cross and sword they yielded. Of course, the, the sword here being the word of God. Um, and saw your kingdom come. O oh God, these two apostles reached life through martyrdom. So they... they so that they, they were witnesses to the, to the kingdom of, of, of God. They, they both um, personally had interactions with Jesus. Obviously, Peter much more as, as one of the original 12. And, and, and the, you know, the, the kind of even the one that they kind of became the leader of that group. Um, and, 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 then, and then Paul, you know, with the miraculous encounter on, on the road. Um, so obviously, Peter had a little bit more, significant more personal interaction with Jesus. They both encountered the the, the the Lord, and they both encountered the risen Lord. Um, and then they both died for their faith. And, that, and that's an important aspect of, you know, even on Sunday we talked about, you know, Jesus, uh, when he gave the, the word, one word to the disciples of his, another word to the disciples of John, and he, and he, and he talked about the, the cross that, 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 that his followers are going to have to follow and the, what it means to lose their life. Or, and in this sense, for all of us, it means ultimately, unless we're here when Jesus returns, that ultimately we do lose our lives. But in this case, lose your lives in, 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 in a dramatic way. You know, we know traditionally that, that Peter was hung on a cross upside down, is the tradition. And that because he refused to be hung the same, he refused to, to, to be crucified the same way in which the Lord. And, and Paul, because he was a Roman citizen, he had a different... Uh, he was actually beheaded, which, w which was actually considered more merciful because there was less suffering involved. Um, but, the, you know, the, the, they, the, they took this, because of their encounter with the risen Lord, because of their um, being involved in the, in the establishment of, in, in the beginning of God's kingdom, in, in God's kingdom here on earth, which we still are part of, they were willing to take that to the, to the very end. And they both, like I said earlier, they both died martyrs' deaths in, in Rome, the capital of the known world at the time. So, now, when you look at the last page of our of our order of worship, if you have it, or if you see this, this is kind of far back there. I, sh I shared this with the kids this morning at chapel. The, in the history of the, the artwork, these things we call icons, iconography, especially in the, in the Orthodox branch of the, of the church, the, the, Peter and Paul are are often depicted, sometimes even holding what, what it says here, the, the sword. This time they're, they're, they're showed holding books, or in the case of Peter, a scroll, and, and, and Paul, a, a book showing that their contribution to the, to the, to the, to the New Testament, but also holding a, a building, literally like that they're holding the church in their hands, that, 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 we, that we all are being held in, 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 a, in, a, in a very metaphorical sense, but in, in also in a, in a sense of a by the, the, the contribution of these two men. But there's one thing that, that really stands out to me in this hymn that, that reminds us of the contribution of Peter and Paul. And sometimes we try to, even in the history of the church, we, we've tried to distinguish them um, by saying, well, Paul was more the, the apostle to the, to, was representative of the apostles, because he wasn't the only one, but the representative of those who went out to the Gentiles, who... Who, who brought the word of God to non-Jewish people. And that Peter was more representative of, the, of bringing the word of God to, to the Jewish people to, and establishing the church in, in that sense. He, he didn't go on the missionary journeys the same way he was in Rome establishing the church. And that's true to a certain extent. Definitely, Paul's work was more emphasized in going to the Gentiles, and P Peter's work was tended to be more emphasized in going to the Jewish believers. And... and but, 
in, 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 the, in the hymn it says, rightfully, they both taught. They taught both Jew and Gentile. Both of them were involved in bringing the word of God to both, to, to both groups. And, and, so, and actually it was, Peter was the one that, that got that assignment first. The famous story of Cornelius where he goes to the, to the Roman soldier. He sees the image you know, with the sheet of food and these, these, these animals that were considered unclean. Um, and, and God tells him this vision, eat. And he says, Lord, I can't eat. I've never eaten anything that's unclean. I can't do this. And he says, no, what, don't call unclean what I've made clean. And then, and then he, Peter later realizes that, no, this was to prepare him to be at the home of Cornelius and to be, be able to reach out to and see that, that the Holy Spirit was going to be poured out on both Gentiles and Jews, even though they, 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 he knew this intellectually, and he experienced, you know, the, the preparation for this on, on Pentecost. It was like, oh, well, wow, this really is going to happen. This is this really going to be this way. It's not going to be just for us. So it's really important that we understand that both men, both Peter and Paul, were heavily involved in bringing the word of God to both Jews and Gentiles, which brings us to our text this morning. The idea that the story of the Jewish of this of this first major church count, uh, first um, council meeting. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been to some really long church voters meetings, council meetings, whatever. I remember early in my career when I was even more honorary than I am now. Um, saying after a church meeting that I, I'm pretty sure Nicaea figured out the Trinity faster than we passed this budget. and That didn't go over so well. But the point is, ch church council meetings, meetings when people disagree, can, get, can, can go on forever. And sometimes they seem pointless. Sometimes they seem frustrating. Um, Pastor Andy's been to several conventions of, of, our, of our own Lutheran church. And, you know, but there is a tradition of doing that, and it comes from this, the early church. They got together and said, hey, we've got to figure some of this stuff out. We have a debate. We, we, have, a, we have one group of, of, of this. And this is early, early on in the church. I mean, just a, within a couple of decades of, of Jesus' um, ascension, that this is going on. And they're, and they're trying to wrestle with this. And what's going on in this text is that in Antioch, so you're getting further north away from the, the, the central of the church, because we know what happened is persecution happened in Jerusalem and that forced the church to scatter and it forced the leaders of the church to scatter. Well, what happened is when they scattered, the, the, the towns that they came to, new churches were started. So, um, so in this sense, it, it spread out. And then well, what, what, what happened, in these, especially in these new churches and in, the, in these areas that weren't, especially these parts of, of the, the kind of the known world, these parts of the Roman Empire that weren't predominantly Jewish, um, like places like Judea and Galilee, I mean, once you got beyond that, more and more non-Jewish people were joining the church. So, and Antioch was kind of this incubator, this, this, this place where this was happening. And, and a lot of the, the early leaders of the church, especially the early Gentile leaders of the church, kind of came out of Antioch. And, then, and this, to this day, it's one of the five centers of Christendom. I mean, in the, in the, in the old um, sense of the, what the church meant, you know, Jerusalem, Antioch, Rome, it's, it's one of the five major centers of Christianity. Now, of course, today it's not a, a, a big church in, in Antioch because it's, it's a part of the world that, that's, that's probably Muslim, but it's still, in, in history and in significance, it's still that because of what happened here. Now, so what happened is some men, it says, came from Judea, came from Jerusalem, and, and were teaching the people in Antioch, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of, of Moses, you cannot be saved. So he, they're, they're putting a, a restriction on who can be saved based on a, a right, based on a, on a, on a part of the, the Jewish tradition. Now, I love this line. It says, And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them. That's kind of a nice way of saying they had it out. This was not, this was a, you, know, you, you all know me by now that I'm not the guy that, that backs down from, from confrontation. That's Randy's job. Um, I can imagine, I can see myself in this conversation. No small dissension, no debate. Like, Paul and Barnabas, what are you guys doing? You can't make, the, you know. So that they had this pretty, you get this idea that, you know, 
Um, Luke is kind of softening the blow here, but you get this idea that no small dissension, no debate. They really kind of, quote unquote, had it out. And then, and what the church in Antioch decided to do about this is to send Paul and Barnabas and some of the other leaders to Jerusalem, and they had this count, they had this convention, they had this council, they had this meeting amongst the, the leaders of the early church, and the apostles were there, and and so what we, what we call bishops now, or, or or some of the early church elders and leaders were were all there, and then even and even we see that it's so sad that, that our human condition that already you have these kind of groups. You have the Pharisees groups. You have the circumcised group. You have these, these, these kind of groups of people, these parties, um, you know, that, that, are, that are trying to figure this thing out. And it says that, it goes on to say when we get down to verse 5, that it's necessary, this is what the Pharisees are saying, the party of the, of the circumcised, it is necessary for them to be circumcised and keep the full law of Moses, meaning all the dietary stuff, you know, and, and all that. And the apostles and the elders were gathered to consider this matter. And then once again, after there was much debate, and here we, here we see Peter. And Peter's so important in this debate. Because it's clear that, that Paul and Barnabas and that group of, of people are going to be the, the leaders of this movement to, to, to grow the church amongst the Gentiles. But Paul and Barnabas do not have the credibility yet that Peter does. They, they don't have the... And whether you're going to see James, not James the Apostle, but James the, the, the half-brother of Jesus, uh, is another, they, they don't quite have the credentials. They don't quite have the, the, the pull in the room. And, you know, and, and in a lot of ways, that's like <laughs> even here at Bethel today. I, have, I can have all these great ideas, and I can have all this, but I haven't been here 30-something years. Randy has. And sometimes, you know, it, it takes both of us, you know, speaking out in order for for you know, ideas to move forward because it just the, the fact that Peter had been there with Jesus. Peter, you know, was there. At, he's the one that gave the sermon, gave the message on Pentecost. He had credentials at this point that Paul didn't quite have. So Peter needed to take the lead here, needed to, to be the one to, to speak this word. And Peter stood up to them and he says this. He says, brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel. So he's talking about his early ministry. He's referring back to the event of Cornelius and all this stuff. <clears throat> should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God who knows the heart bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, what's the evidence that God's working in people? They have the Holy Spirit. So these Gentile believers that have never been circumcised, who continue to eat shrimp and and pork and all this food that you find offensive, guess what? They have the same Holy Spirit you do. <clears throat> he said, he makes no distinction between us having cleansed from the heart of faith. And then he accuses them of putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the, these disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear. <clears throat> so basically what Peter is saying here is you're forcing these, these non-Jewish believers, these to take on a burden that we ourselves could not even fulfill the law. That he's saying, so why, why are you forcing others to do what you can't even do yourself? And make that a condition for following Jesus. So he's making a really, I mean, he's cutting right to the, to the, to the point here. I mean, he's cutting deep. He's saying, you can't do this. And then after that, it says the assembly fell silent. I mean, he... You know, he, he really got their attention. And then Paul and Barnabas come behind them. So then Paul comes and tells all the stories that had happened, all the excitement, and, and, you know, all the, all the people that are coming to faith in the Gentiles, um, how God is working among them, the, the, these stories. And then finally, and then, then they talk about, and then we have this, and then James comes up, the half-brother of Jesus, and says, you know, says, hey, this is the fulfillment of this prophecy. That, that this is going to happen, that, that, the good, that the good news is going to come to the Gentiles. And, and, in, and in the end, they decide, that, that this council does, that we are not going to put the burden of the full law of Moses on these believers, on, these, on the Gentile believers. They don't have to be circumcised. They don't have to follow all the, 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 the dietary uh, restrictions. They don't have to follow the Sabbath in the same sense. And that's, and that's one of the things that led to the shifting of, of worship on Sunday. They, 
And yet we still see remnants of this, right? Like in the Seventh-day Adventist church and others, we still see kind of remnants of this idea that, you know, um, some people still want to hold closer to a what, Christ, what the early church looked like in the sense of being so tied to Judaism. And, and others have obviously taken a different direction with that. But that's what's at stake here. And, and what I love about what, what, what Peter says here, and he says, and he reminds us that it is faith in Christ that makes one a believer. Period. It, 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 it's not about what you eat. It's not about what you, all these other things that the people were trying to get so hung up on. He says, he reminds us that no, it's Christ's work on the cross is is the is what it is and, and what makes it what makes it happen. And then so it says it, it seemed good at the end of this text, it says this it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us that you lay no greater burden on these requirements. So other than believing in and then, and then they, so they say abstain from what food sacrificed to idols, from blood, um, from what has been strangled, which is a way of preparing food, and then from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. And even some of those have even some of even those requirements have have dropped. If you ever order a medium well steak, you, you would have been in violation of this. So <laughs> if you like your steaks, you know, a little runny or whatever. But that's but the point is, this was huge, and, and what this allowed, without this council meeting, we may not have this. We may not have the Peter and Paul as the, the, the icons or the, the, the founders, the, the, the people on which the church is held, because they were allowed to do, because of the decisions of this council, Peter and Paul were allowed to do the work that they were called to do. And it's interesting that God chose these two men, because they could have been no... It, it's hard to imagine an odder couple than these two guys, and, and how different they were. Peter was a fisherman. He was a commoner from Galilee. He was probably not that well educated when he first came to Jesus. And he, and, and he was a guy that you know, had grown up and the, the, probably as a disciple at some point, but along the way he took the, the, the route of going to be a fisherman. And, and yet he, and he followed Jesus. And he was a man of action and impulse. Paul was, I mean, he went to the Harvard. Of, I mean, he was studied under the Gamaliel. He, he, he lived in Tarsus in a, in, in a much more cultured city. And even you see even these pictures. In the picture, you know, Paul's dress is much more refined. And he's wearing purple and, and things like that. So he, he was much more educated. He, he, he was a Roman citizen. He, he, had, he had some credentials there that Peter didn't have. Um, so, but God used these two very different men to establish his church. You know, I've been thinking about over the last couple of days in reflecting on this message. And what, 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 what does this speak to us today, this, this church council meeting? And it's particularly the witness of Paul and, and Peter at this witness. And, and if you look at the last three months of our world, things have changed drastically. Because of the coronavirus and because of some of the protests that are going on and even the whole conversation on race again, and I think in our country, has shifted in a positive way. And yet some of the same issues that Paul and Peter were wrestling with and this council were wrestling with are at the core of where we are today. What do we make people do? What, what, what is our responsibility to people? And, and even at Bethel, we're wrestling with that right now as, as we look at coming back to live worship. You know, what, what does that look like? And, and, and how do we respect each other's beliefs but also try to do what's the best interest of everyone? Um, in race relations, you know, I, I love that our, our president, our bishop in, in here in the Texas district has said, let's pray to end racism. And, but not only just pray, but let's be active in our communities to do that. And yet the, the, the history of the church and even the history of the Lutheran church isn't always the best here. We, like this council, have been at times a church body that's tried to put extra restrictions on people that aren't, for example, Germanic or aren't white, or aren't this, or aren't that. And we, and we, and we have to own that. We have to say, you know, that there's different ways in which, you know, restrictions are put on people. There's some that are obvious, like you have to be circumcised. If you eat this food, you can't be a part of us. 
But there's others that are more subtle. Um, and, and it could be language could be a, a subtle thing. Uh, access can be a struggle. And, and we, one of the things I, that, that really makes me proud to be a part of Bethel right now is that as we brought in uh, groups from other language groups and other traditions, we've worked really hard to not put those restrictions, not put those boundaries, not put those, those even those little subtle things that, that make access to not just worship, but access to, to space and access to, to, the, to what we have to offer here at Bethel and even beyond Bethel and to our community with the way, the way that we've adopted a local school and some of those things. And that makes me proud, but also recognize that we still have a long way to go. And if anything, the last three months have showed us that the church still has a long way to go. And during this time, it, it can be frustrating. It can feel like the church is closed. But as we're reminded in the Word of God, the church is not a building. The church of God is open, and it will always be open. The church that Peter and Paul helped establish will be with us, and not just in our gatherings on Sundays or Saturdays or Wednesdays or whenever we gather, but more, even more so in the way that we show love to all and the spirit of what Peter and Paul were all about. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed apostles Peter and Paul glorified you in their death as in their life, grant that your church, inspired by their teaching and example, and made one by your spirit, may ever stand firm upon the one foundation, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious Jesus, our Lord, our God, at this hour you bore our sins in your, home, in your body in the tree, so that we, being dead to sin, might live to righteousness. Have mercy upon us now, and at the hour of our death, grant to us, your servants, with all others, who devoutly remember your blessed passion, a holy, peaceful life in this world and through your grace, eternal glory, and the life to come, where with the Father and the Son and the Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and defend us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.